Hello everybody, Razorblade Mango here, and let the E3 festivities begin! Dun 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 dun! So, like every year, I talk about the conferences that have happened, and first up, we're going to talk about Electronic Arts, who had their EA Play conference thingy Saturday morning, and, uh, well, short general impressions, I guess, to start the video off. I like to describe their, their conference with two letters, F and U. Technically Y, but F U, I think, gets the point across a lot better. So, similarly to my predictions video. We're going to be talking about the specific games they showed off, and what they showed off from them, and then we're going to get into my final thoughts of how they did overall with the conference. So to kick things off, they started with Battlefield 5, and Battlefield 5 started this running trend throughout the conference, the rest of it, in that for a game, for a game conference called EA Play, they didn't show a lot of gameplay of their stuff. And this unfortunately started right away with Battlefield 5. And after the really lackluster, underwhelming reveal presentation that they gave last month, I was hoping they would knock this one out of the park. This was an easy win. All you have to do is show full gameplay from Battlefield 5. That's all you have to do. But they didn't. They just talked about the they just talked about some of the small features of the game that we already knew about back in May. And they showed off concept art. And they showed off a small in-engine CG trailer thing. They spent maybe 5 minutes on Battlefield 5 in a conference that went on for an hour and a half. And this game is supposed to be like EA's big thing this year as far as like shooter games go? Are you fucking kidding me? So nothing about this impressed me at all. It was just super weak. And of course we have to get the confirmation that the single player is going to be shown during Xbox's thing. And for context, I'm recording this before Xboxes, so I have no idea what how that how that's gonna go I'll know when I do the Xbox video but for the time being I have only just seen the E3 con the EA conference right now oh and they announced a new battle royale mode Woo! everybody's looking forward to and it's coming after launch yay I'm so excited for EA's take on the battle royale genre I'm so excited yeah? No, not really. I'm not excited. I'm not going to go into that whole he is my lord and savior thing again. Not after this fucking conference. Not even as a joke. So, the next thing they moved on to was FIFA 19, which... Eh, as far as the sports stuff goes, this is honestly the only one out of the bunch that I have any remote interest in. And a lot of that has to do with Mario, you know, Mario's a big fan of FIFA, and he and I, like, used to play before I just grew frustrated with how good he was and quit. But I was hoping for something better from EA regarding FIFA. Considering, like, this is, more than any of their other games, this is, like, their big cash cow. And EA just didn't show a whole lot. They just spewed a bunch of crap about how they raise the bar for FIFA gameplay every year and how they're bringing all these beautiful wonderful new changes to it and the thing is it never actually feels that way when you play it it never does you could stick a copy of 2014 and 2019 in the my PS4 and I won't know the difference just remove the names I'm not gonna know the fucking difference Really, I'm not. For somebody who's a super, super, super duper casual FIFA fan, I 
I'm not going to know the difference. They, they, they've they never made any dramatic changes in probably the last five, six, seven entries that they've done of this franchise. It's just, like, no. <laughs> no, not impressive. At least that one trailer had Michael K. Williams' voice in it. Like, I love Michael K. Williams. I was happy to hear his voice because he has a badass voice. And then they moved on to... Respawn's Star Wars game, which was presented in probably the most boring way possible, but it was a lot more exciting than the other two things shown off so far, where we finally have a name and uh, like tentative release window for Respawn's Star Wars game, which is called <clears throat> Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. And it's a game where you play as a Padawan who has survived Order 66, and is on the run when Sith Lords come down, come to hunt him or her down. And it's set between episodes three and four, obviously. And it's Respawn. And of course, we didn't see any gameplay footage for it. Because, God forbid, we make this conference interesting. And whatever, it, it's, it's Respawn. I, I, they made Titanfall 2. One of my favorite games of all time. I trust them to make something cool at this point. And it's got the guy behind God of War 3 directing it. So I'm I'm very happy. Not God of War. Not Cor Corey Barlog. It's 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 Stig. Uh, Stig. Whatever. It is. And, and I'm sorry. I'm If I try, I'm going to butcher the guy's name. So his name is Stig. Just know him as the director of God of War 3. And then oh, that was the only Star Wars thing they showed off. They then went into my favorite game of all time, Star Wars Battlefront 2. Which, fuck off. Just fuck off. Uh, the thing they're doing is Clone Wars content, which confirms a Reddit leak that happened like about a month ago that was went into like super specific details. And the leak was 100% right. It's, it's Geonosis. You get characters like General Grievous and Count Dooku, Obi-Wan, Anakin Skywalker. It, you get that. And I could not have given less of a fuck. I know, I know I, this is, you know, oh, I raised my mango who doesn't like Battlefront 2. What a surprise. I just found the whole presentation insulting because the guy came up, and I don't blame the guy. I blame EA. I blame EA 100% for this. I don't blame DICE. The, but the poor guy had to come up on stage and, and tiptoe around the issue like, oh, well, we didn't get this right the first time. I was like, ha, that's a bit of an understatement there, buddy. You guys fucking derailed the loot box train right just as I was pulling out of the station. Yeah, getting it right is not exactly fully encompassing how badly you guys fucked up. So let's let's call it let's call it for what it is. A fuck up but they're never gonna say that because that's not corporate enough that's not that's not squeaky clean and corporate yeah thankfully from that from that insulting crap they moved on to unravel 2 which is something that i predicted you know well before the conference even started and for me this was the highlight of of the show easily i like the first unravel it's a fun debut for these EA Original games. They're actually called EA Originals. And it was a cute, fun platformer that I feel still had a lot of potential that hadn't yet been tapped into. And I'm really excited to trying this out because the idea of going on more of these adventures with Yarn Boy or whatever, Yarny or whatever the hell his name is, in local co-op sounds fun. And... The bigger bombshell is that it released yesterday at the time of this recording, like right after the conference was over. It was like, oh, here it is. Unravel 2, 20 bucks, enjoy. And I de was downloading it, and I I've had downloaded. I haven't tried it yet because I want to wait till friends come over. I want to get the full co op Yarn Boy adventure experience. Pretty, pretty excited, can't wait. Then they moved on to another highlight which is this game called Sea of Solitude. And after this really... Like, like EA is known for its usual barrage of crap, but it's so jarring to see these super passionate, 
developers come on stage and talk about how deeply personal their games are, how this was like their vision that was born out of a clear place of love, whether it's the guy being nervous on stage with, with Unravel or Joseph Farris talking about a way out so passionately, and now um, the woman that came up, I'm sorry, I don't know her name, talking about Sea of Solitude, how she wrote it because she felt you know lonely and, and how it's, a, it's an allegory for loneliness and depression. It's just like, wow, what what are these games doing here? What what are these games doing here on, on EA stage? Just, wow. And thankfully the trailer like made it look good, sold me on it. And that woman had sold me on it before the, the, the trailer even started. And it has a really cool, haunting looking atmosphere and apparently like in the game it's this flooded world where you're like on this boat and you walk around and and these monsters come alive because depression is a big thing in this world and it just really i felt like sea of solitude's developers just knocked it out of the park with this one really did and i'm really really looking forward to whatever this game is going to be I, i'm really i'm really excited but unfortunately, um, this is around the point where I was thinking, oh, okay, like we're starting to get into some really good stuff. And there have been some things that just made me go bleh, but I'm really into this so far. This might turn out to be okay for an EA press conference. After this, it just... <sighs> fell out of the sky and crashed into the ground. The next thing, mere seconds after the, the haunting personal atmosphere of Sea of Solitude, we got sports, 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 with NBA Live and Madden NFL 19. And to be fair, neither of these two showings were offensively bad. But it was just like, okay, what are, like, like, why put this here after this, this, like, good, solid 10 minutes of good stuff, and now we're back to the bullshit. It was just, ah, uh, just, just flipped the, flipped the switch right away and went back to the usual EA. Uh, but I don't care about any NBA Live. I don't care about men, NFL, 19. I really wish someone would just get rid of... I really wish someone would just make a good NBA street game at this point. I know there's NBA Playgrounds or whatever it's called, but that doesn't cut it in my book. Like, I need a true spiritual successor to NBA Street Volume 2. One of my favorite games of all time. I can't believe EA has made, like, two or three of my favorite games of all time. That Considering how much I bag on them. It's crazy. And then the next thing after that was just something I found unbelievable command and conquer rivals I mean wow just <laughs> wow confession I've never played a command and conquer game I'm not a big real time strategy guy but I know I know about Command and Conquer. I know a lot of people who are really into it and have wanted EA to make a full-fledged Command and Conquer game for years, like again. And there's been this running gag among players that the only way EA would ever bring back Command and Conquer is to turn it into some kind of shitty free-to-play mobile game. And they brought it back into a shitty free-to-play mobile game. So the way... It's reality. So the way this whole thing started out is you had two guys on stage talking about how they were going to be shoutcasting for this mobile title. And I was thinking, oh, for Christ's sake, we're going to get into shoutcasting now again with a mobile game of all things that no one's going to give a fuck about. They spent more time on this shitty mobile game than they did both Battlefield 5 and FIFA. That's that's just insane. 
two of their biggest titles coming out this year. Their two biggest AAA titles. They showed more gameplay and had more screen time, more conference time for this fucking abomination of a broken franchise. Fuck you, EA. Go fuck yourself. And the whole time I was watching it, I was thinking, wow, this looks like ass. This looks like every other fucking two-bit Clash of Clans ripoff or whatever the fuck. It just looks so generic and boring. I don't care. And then someone on Twitter mentioned Command and Conquer. And I thought, oh no. This is Command and Conquer, isn't it? This is. Sure enough, it was Command and Conquer. And I thought, oh my god, they actually did it. They actually fucking did it. Wow. Unfucking real. Just shamelessly shown off to a, you know, very obviously unimpressed audience. In all its naked, cynical, anti-glory. Fucking incredible. After this, I, I legit believe EA revels in the idea of them being hated. Like, they just, like, they, they can't get an erection if they, like, the CEOs at EA can't get an erection if they don't think about how much people hate them. It's like some sick fetish that they have that they just can't sexually perform without all this hatred in their in their face from its audience. Or they drink the tears of their the fan bases of their fallen franchises. That's the only way they can power their corporate offices in Redwood. Just fucking hell. And then, oh man, the final thing they did after that was Anthem. Oh boy. Um, so to make a long story short, it's Destiny. Yes, the gameplay has been given a burst of verticality. Yes, the graphics look much better than Destiny or Destiny 2. But it's Destiny. This is Destiny through and through. And for a game they've been hyping up for four years now? Bioware's presentation of Anthem landed with an enormous fucking thud for me. It looks like the dullest, most generic, ho-hum, science fiction thing you could possibly do that looks like Destiny. It looks like Destiny. It has concepts that are Destiny. It even has its own version of Destiny's Nolanbot Ghost. How fucking shameless can you get? And Bioware gave a ton of lip service about how great this story is going to be, how well it's melded with the multiplayer, how lovable these characters are, and we saw no evidence of that in the shit they were showing off. They kept, every time they were on stage talking to Andrea uh, Renee, who did a good job, by the way. This is None of this is her fault. Don't bag on her, people. And... All they showed was just like the same snippets of small gameplay and concept art over and over and over again. What is it with EA and concept art? What the fuck is it with them and concept art? Every fucking time we get a new game coming out, it's, oh, here's this, here's small snippets of this, here's concept art. I don't want to see concept art, I want to see gameplay. I want to see gameplay that impresses me. And none of this shit was impressing me. So... Then they finally showed off gameplay of a mission, and it looked fucking boring, and it was not funny, and you had the Nolan Bot 2.0, British Nolan Bot 2.0 making jokes, and you had this insidious little thing they did where they subtly combined scripted mic banter, very subtly done, with actual voice acting of the game to create this fucked up illusion of dynam dynamism that isn't going to be there in the final game. It was so fucking bizarre the way they did it go back and watch it you'll get little snippets of of mic banter like talking to the game in order to like mirror like mimic the illusion of your avatar talking i haven't seen any proof that this character has, has bioware confirmed that your avatars talk like are fully voiced and everything and, and do dialogue choices 
It, it has not been fully confirmed. Please, somebody tell me. I would like to be wrong. I don't want a Bioware game where I have a silent protagonist again. That's not fun. Silent protagonists, when you're trying to create these large emotional connecting worlds, are not fucking fun. They're not fun. Only in rare, very rare cases does it work. Persona 5 is one of them. Skyrim is one of them. Like, the old Final Fantasy games are one of them. It's just, when you have a mute protagonist, and you're trying to create this emotionally compelling narrative, you need voice protagonists. You need a Commander Shepard. But if they're not, that's a big fuck-up day one. Bioware, seriously, this is the hill you want to die on? Like, this is the beginning of the end. They killed Mass Effect for this shit? This boring bullshit? I'm so disappointed in you, Bioware. I expected... I, I don't know what I expected, but I expected better than this. Something that doesn't look so cookie-cutter to every other Destiny clone out there. EA's vision of a Destiny clone just makes my fucking skin crawl. And everything I've heard from this game just has not impressed me whatsoever. Oh! And... People actually applauded when Bioware said there would be cosmetic microtransactions in this game. Applauding. Microtransactions. This is what it's come to. EA has fucked up so badly with the loot box thing that its idiot audience is going to actively cheer for microtransactions. Even if they're, yeah, they're just cosmetic only. No. No, no, no. Stop it! Stop encouraging them to keep doing this! If they really gave a shit, there would be no microtransactions, period! None! At all! So that was EA. But I'm not done with them yet. Oh, no, 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 no. The low point of this spectacle wasn't a game. That honor belonged to EA's robotic CEO, Andrew Wilson, standing on stage with a shit-eating grin, giving maybe the most disgusting, patronizing, dishonest, insulting speech I've ever heard from the fuckheads at Redwood Shores. EA, after spending most of 2017 and a good chunk of this year gloating bragging to their shareholders about how much fucking money, how much ass load of money that they are making from microtransactions and how Battlefront 2's gameplay breaking loot boxes were all about, quote, player choice. Wilson had the goddamn fucking nerve to come out on stage and give this fucking speech that literally made my jaw drop from how tone deaf and insulting it was like i i i do not make i do not take these games personally like i i i try not to take these games personally i think that's an unhealthy way of looking at it however in this case and i'm gonna read the full quote from andrew wilson because i'm not gonna i'm not i don't want to listen to his voice again so i'm gonna read you the full quote starting now we are always trying to learn and listen and strive to be better. As you look at the 10 experiences that you're going to see today, and this is him addressing the audience, and as you play games this week, there's some things we hope come through. First, that at the very core is choice, is that you as players get to choose how you play, what you play, when you play, and what devices you play on. That in making these choices, you feel you are treated fairly. That no one is given an unfair advantage or disadvantage for how they choose to play. That for every moment that you invest, we know that you put so much of your life into the games we make, you feel like you are rewarded and you are given value for that investment. And most importantly, that the games are fun, that we move past the grind, and that there are experiences that truly enhance your lives. So as we think through all the things we're trying to do, know that we want to be better and that we want to make great games. End quote. 
bull fucking shit. Less than a year ago, EA was more than ready to hop aboard that loot box train. They were the conductor. They were the ones blowing the whistle ready to ride that motherfucker out of the station. And the only reason that EA is giving this cowardly spiel now is because everyone on the fucking planet, including Disney itself, the Mouse of House itself, came down on EA for how they were using Star Wars to encourage kids to gamble. EA had no fucking problem with it back then, and even now, because all their goddamn fucking sports games love pushing loot boxes onto their players, love talking about their football ultimate team and their soccer ultimate team and FIFA making them like a billion fucking dollars, more than a billion dollars in microtransactions, EA is not standing on stage talking about the human cost that these games do to people. The kids that go out and spend their parents' credit cards on f football packs. How there were stories of kids ruining the lives of their grandparents or cheating their grandparents out of inheritance. That is not okay. What so goddamn ever. And yet, Andrew Wilson, CEO of EA, had the fucking spine to stand on that stage with that shitty grin and deliver his easily challenged horseshit with a straight face and a thunderous applause from the fucking moron sitting in the audience. It was a grotesque, condescending display of corporate cowardice that only a fucking cunt like Andrew Wilson could pull off. If he had any shame, I would say he should be ashamed of himself. But he doesn't. No one at EA has any shame. They don't give a flying fuck about their audience. They don't give a flying fuck about player choice. They don't give a flying fuck about having great games. The only thing they give a fuck about is making money. And like any corporation, I know that corporation's number one goal is to make money. But the way EA does it, with the amount of titles they've got behind them, with the amount of potential goodwill they could be getting from their audience, is downright despicable, and has been despicable for many years, and EA continues to push the boat out on how shit they are. Fuck Andrew Wilson. Apparently, the super fucking gullible baboons cheering Wilson on in the audience didn't know that EA does not give a fuck about them and swallowed that shit like cotton candy. They have no goddamn idea that EA knows full goddamn well what they are doing, what they did, and will continue to do. EA can die in a fucking wasp infested hellhole, and they can take those idiot fucking fans with them. And from the bottom of my heart, bottom of my heart, Andrew Wilson, and yes, I am addressing you personally. Andrew Wilson, Blake Jorgensen, Patrick Solerin, all the assholes at EA. Fuck you. From the bottom of my heart. You, you people are a blight on video gaming. You are a cancer. And I hope one day when the new generation comes up, who is sick of your shit, takes over these companies, we can finally, finally bring some dignity back to the games that you have fucked into oblivion. Battlefront, Command and Conquer, FIFA, Skate, Star Wars, all these great franchises that could be potentially good under the umbrella of EA's fucking corporate shit. Final grade of this conference... D plus. Everyone, a lot of people said I should give this conference an F. And I feel like I'm being kind of generous with D plus. Because the more I think about e Andrew Wilson's shit, the angrier I get. But I can't deny that there were some highlights. Or there haven't been in past e uh, EA conferences. C sea of Solitude looked really good. Unravel 2 looked really good. Respawn was there. Respawn talked about their Star Wars game. That made me excited. Everything else was a mix of meh or rage-inducing. Particularly Anthem. And 
the way Bioware presented Anthem was just so underwhelming and so painfully boring that I don't even I don't even know what to say anymore other than the clock is the the, the doomsday clock is ticking for Bioware cuz this anthem shit is not going to help them and it comes out the same day as Days Gone guess what game I'm going to be buying that game uh that day here's a hint it's not the one from EA hint 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 so yeah final grade on EA's conference D fuck EA Fuck Andrew Wilson. Fuck you. See you guys next time.